Hi, this is Mr. Rich. We're going to do another easy, medium, hard. This is for AP pre-calculus, and we're going to be doing exponential regression. The first problem that I want to work on here is how to find the percent increase or decrease of an exponential function. Let's take each one of these. This first question is f of x equals 0.5 times 1.2 to the x. Well, when we're dealing with exponential functions, exponential functions are written in this form. 1 plus or minus r raised to the x power. So when I look at this, this is the a, and the 1.2 is the 1 plus or minus r. So apparently, this would be written as 0.5 times 1 plus 0.2 to the x. The r, in this case, is the rate of increase or decrease. So the rate of increase here is 20%. 0.2 is 20%. So for this function, every time x goes up by 1, this initial value of 0.5 is increasing by 20%. So this is an increase in 20%. Here, in this case, it's 2 times 0.7 raised to the x power. So we could rewrite this as 2 times 1 minus 0.3 raised to the x power. So that means that 0.3 is 30%. So this right here would be a 30% decrease. That means that every time x goes up by 1, this number, 2, would be reduced initially by 30%. Then the next time x increments to another integer, say to the number 2, then that value would, be, would decrease by another 30%. And let's write over here that this is a 20% increase. When we go to number 3, this says 4 times 0.025 to the x. So because this value is less than 1, it is a decrease. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 1 minus 0 0.025, which is going to be 0.975. So this represents a 97.5% decrease. To multiply something by 0 0.025 is to reduce it by 1 minus 0 0.025 or 97.5%. Here's the medium problem. This asks us to find the equation of the following exponential function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first try to find what is the common ratio or the base of the exponential by looking at the ratios between the outputs. I can do that because I notice that the inputs are all increasing by 1 in this table. In other words, I have equal width inputs. The, in, the intervals between each input are 1. That means that if this is an exponential function, I should see a proportional relationship between the outputs or the first level differences. Let me show you what I mean. If you take a look at these outputs and you ratio each output by the one before it, for the first pair, I get a ratio of five. On the second pair, 34 over 10, I don't get five, I get 3.4. So apparently these outputs are not proportional to one another. That doesn't mean that the function that these numbers are representing isn't exponential. It means that if it is exponential, then there must be some sort of vertical shift to it that makes the outputs themselves not proportional. However, that proportionality factor, that proportion will show up in the first level differences. So if I take the first differences between these outputs, and again, this only works because my input values are of equal width intervals. Here, this difference is 8. This difference is 24 this difference is 72, and then this difference between those two outputs is 216. And now you can see that there is a common proportion between these outputs, and that common proportion is 3, 8 to 24, 3 times 3, 24 times 3, 72 times 3. So that tells me that the base of the exponential is going to be 3, but since the outputs were not proportional, I'm going to write the exponential function like this. What I've done is I've added a plus k at the end to indicate that there is likely, or there is definitely going to be a vertical shift. There's going to be a constant term at the end of this exponential. My job then is to find both a, b, and 
k. Well, we have already found b. We found that this proportionality is 3 on those first level uh, differences. Therefore, we can move one step ahead and say that this equation must look like this with 3 to the x plus k. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first point, 0, 2, and plug it into the equation. That gives me 2 equals a times 3 to the 0 power plus k. That gives me an equation that has two unknowns, our two coefficients, a and k. This would be 2 must be equal to a plus k. Well, I'm going to come up with another linear equation with a and k by using the next point that's in the table, which is 1 comma 10. When I plug that in, this function right here is going to look like this. 10 is equal to the constant a times 3 uh, to the 1 power plus k. This simplified is 10 equals 3a plus k. So what I have now are two linear equations with unknowns a and k. I'm going to solve them with substitution. This equation, I'm going to solve for a. a is equal to 2 minus k. I will take this now and substitute it into this equation. It would look like this. So I just substituted 2 minus k in for a. Now I'm going to simplify. 6 minus 3k plus k. I'm now going to combine like terms and move the 6 over. And I get 4 equals negative 2k. Now I'm going to solve for k. k is negative 2. I'm now going to substitute that back in here. And this is going to give me a is equal to 2 minus a negative 2, or a is equal to 4. That gives me really my final equation that I was looking for, my final exponential relationship. f of x is equal to 4 times 3 raised to the x power minus 2. And one last step is we will try and make sure that this function works with one of these points. And let's use 4 comma 322. This would be, to see if this works, plugging in 322 here, but plugging in 4 for x. And let's see if this equation is indeed true. Well, 3 to the 4th is 81, and 81 times 4 happens to be 324 minus 2. It does check 322 is equal to 322. I've confirmed that this is the exponential function. And finally, here's the hard problem. This says use exponential regression to create a best fit function for the following data. Well, I'm going to use exponential regression. So I'm going to put the input values, the x's, into my TI-84 into L1 and my outputs into L2. And then I'm going to let the calculator do the regression analysis. And I will show you how that's done. First, what I'm going to do on my TI-84 is I am going to come in to hit the stat button and edit. I'm going to clear out the existing data that I have in L1 and L2, and I will come in here and put this data in. I now have all four of those ordered pairs into L1 and L2. Now I'm going to leave and do second function quit. I'm now going to run stat exponential regression. On the TI-84, that's found by hitting the stat button, sliding over to the calc menu, and scrolling down to function number zero, which is exp reg for exponential regression. I'm going to hit that. It does default to L1 and L2 as being my list for the x values and my list for the y values. I'm not using a frequency list, so I leave that blank. And then I'm going to ask the calculator to store the regression equation into equation y1 of my ti-84. That's done by doing alpha trace and it brings up this menu that allows me to select where I want to place this regression equation. 
Now, I don't need to store the regression equation there because it is going to display it as soon as I hit the calculate. But if you are working a problem on a test that requires you to generate this exponential regression, it's very likely that there's going to be some other parts to the problem that ask you to use that equation. So you do want to have it go ahead and store it and store it in your calculator. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'll hit calculate and it now is displaying what equation is that I should write down. So it shows you the equation is y equals a times b to the x. So that means that it's going to look like this. y is equal to a 186.721. I'll go out to three decimal places here. Times the b value 1.251 raised to the x power. We're not worried right now about what r squared and r represent. That's something that we would cover maybe in an AP stats class. But this is the equation, and it is the what we call the best fit equation for these four ordered pairs. What I do want to show you, though, is where that equation is stored. If I hit the y equals button, you can see that those coefficients that it gave me that I've written down all the way out to more decimal points, it's been loaded into the Y1 equation. And you can see that that 1.25 with those additional decimals all raised to the X power. So there's the equation. There's a couple things you could do with that equation now that it's there. One of the things is that if they had asked me as a part of this problem to use this regression equation to predict what the output would be when x takes on another value, like let's say negative 5. Let's suppose that we wanted to find out what the output is, our prediction is, for an output when x is negative 5. Well, I don't need to evaluate this by plugging in a negative 5. What I need to do is from my home screen, my calculating screen, is do alpha trace to pull up that menu, call up y1, and then in parentheses, just like you would with function notation, I'm going to put in negative 5. And that's going to pass the value of negative 5 and stick it in for x and then evaluate the equation that's stored in y1. And so now we know that the prediction is that when x is negative 5, the output is 61.032. That sort of makes sense based on the data that's in the table. Negative 5 would be somewhere between negative 7 and negative 1. And, uh, and certainly 61 is in between those two output values. And, and it's, it's closer to the negative 7 than it is to the negative 1 output value, which makes sense because negative 5 is a little closer to negative 7. So anyways, that is what I would use that for. I'll show you one other thing that we can do with this is I'm going to have uh, the calculator graph the exponential function for these x values. So I'm going to go in and set my window. And the x values that I want to look at would be from about negative 10, since it goes to negative 8. And then I'll take it out uh, to about x equals 5. On my y values, my y window, my y min and y max, I'm going to go from 0, but I'm going to go up to about uh, 350, because my outputs go from 30 to 280. And when I graph this, what it's going to do is it's going to graph not only the points that I entered in, but it's also going to show me the equation that I've stored right there. So those one, two, three, those four dots are these four ordered pairs. And then the smooth blue line right there is the equation that we had at store from the regression analysis. So you can see it's a pretty good fit, right? Because that curved line comes very close to all four of those points. So that tells us that the exponential model looks like, at least from this analysis, looks like it's going to be a pretty good one because it's so close to those output values. All right, class, that is it for today. That is easy, medium, hard on exponential regression. I will see you in the next video.